Okay, so Cecil Stedman is one of the most enigmatic characters in Invincible. The government agent seems like a strategic genius that is always one step ahead of everyone else and because of this, he's one of season one's most interesting characters. But what are his hopes, his dreams? Well, we're not really going to be discussing that, but throughout this video, we will be going over his comic history, what the show does differently and also how he got those scars. Full spoilers ahead, so if you don't want anything ruined then I recommend that you turn off now. Whilst the show might be taking things in a different direction, we will be discussing what happens with him, Mark, Robot, Omni-Man and the rest of the characters, so get the hell out of here if you still want some surprises. If you're still here, huge thank you for clicking the video, now let's get into our invincible character breakdown. Ok so Cecil Stedman first appeared in the pages of Brit Cold Death all the way back in 2003. Based at the Pentagon, he worked alongside his partner Donald, who you too might know from the TV show. Though he wouldn't make his appearance in the Invincible universe until issue 13 of the original run, the character has a long and rich history in the pages of Image Comics. As a young agent, Cecil was captured by terrorists who ended up torturing him and they also exposed him to a flesh disintegrating gas that completely ravaged his skin. Luckily, Brit stepped in to save the day and he freed the character from what would have been certain death. However, Cecil's body was badly damaged and thus he had to have artificial skin put over his entire skeleton in order to save his life. However, Cecil left a scar around his mouth as a reminder of the time that he failed. Now though on the surface, this just seems like a great bit of character design. It actually goes beyond that and subtly hints to readers at exactly what kind of a man that he is. Cecil once said that he would make a deal with the devil in order to keep the planet safe and his entire appearance also speaks to this mentality. Though he seems like a corporate suit dude due to his attire, there's also an ugliness to him that is hinted through this scar and as we learn throughout the series, he's someone who will do whatever it takes to win even if it means breaking the rules. The previous head of the Global Defense Agency once told Cecil that he could be the good guy or the guy who saved the world, but not always both at the same time. This is something that stuck with him and driven by his ambition, Cecil quickly rose through the ranks of national security. It wasn't too long before he was chosen to replace the head of the GDA after he stepped down and for years he worked with groups like the Guardians of the Globe in order to protect the planet from any invaders. Now, The show version and comic one do differ quite a lot. In the comics he doesn't actually appear until after Omni-Man has revealed the truth to his son. Like everyone else on Earth, he was completely blindsided by the Superman and wasn't aware anything was up until it was too late. Juxtaposing this, Cecil in the show is there quite early on and he quickly discovers that it was Nolan who killed the Guardians of the Globe. He launches an investigation to get to the bottom of things and very much plays Nolan into thinking that he's not a suspect in their deaths. Cecil even exercises Damien Darkblood and sends him back to hell just to keep up appearances, whereas in the comics this plot point never happened. Instead, Damien simply went away to investigate the attack and showed up much later when things were already out in the open. He was pretty much the butt of a joke as he showed up like, I know who killed the Guardians, whilst everyone was already aware of it. Because of his absence early on in the comics, I actually prefer the version of Cecil that we get in this show to the source material and you never quite know whether Mark can really trust the guy. Now we do learn that Cecil knew Omni-Man for several years and they actually met early on in Nolan's career. He gave Cecil the BS story of Veltrum that he told everyone including his son and though Cecil knew it was likely false, he let it slide so that Earth had a protector. He said that the Veltromites travel through the universe as part of the World Betterment Committee, helping planets to also reach this level of perfection. However, the truth was far more sinister and they would actually send in one of their forces as a Trojan horse that would weaken a planet's defences. This is why Nolan killed the Guardians as it would allow for his army to invade Earth more easily. Upon the Veltromites arrival, planets would have a choice, death or enslavement and thus they're bad bad news for the people of Earth. Now Cecil worked with Nolan over the decades and he very much gave him jobs to carry out in order to save the planet. Cecil allowed Nolan to become a best selling author and he helped him to build a secret identity. The pair would communicate through an inner ear link up that Cecil gave him and this allowed him to constantly be in touch with the character so that he could perform certain tasks and jobs. Now it's through this that Cecil was actually able to listen in on Omni-Man's confession to his son Mark. 
Nolan and Mark went head to head after this reveal and the former bested his son in the battle. However, rather than killing Mark, he fled into space and Mark was left as one of the planet's only protectors. Because of this, Cecil quickly swooped in to make sure that we still had a chance against any other invaders who might now want the planet and he quickly hired Mark to carry out jobs for him. Their relationship worked much in the same way that Nolan's did and Cecil would send him out on missions to keep Earth safe. Now, over a large part of the run, the pair worked together and Cecil protected Debbie by keeping her on the payroll so that she didn't have to worry about finances. When Mark journeyed into space and discovered that he had a younger stepbrother, Cecil also made sure that the child was tutored and looked after. However, as we know, he does have a darker side to him and in the show, we actually see him studying Mark's blood. Now, though this could have been just carried out as a way to find a weakness for Omni-Man, if we looked at the comics, it could hint at an upcoming arc. In issue 50, it's revealed that Cecil has been looking for a weakness within Mark and that he managed to discover one when he fought his father. It turns out that Viltrumites are actually susceptible to a high-pitched frequency and believing that he's become a loose cannon, Cecil plays this sound. He also ambushes Mark with the Rihanna men in order to take him down and it's one of the biggest twists in the entire run. However, Mark gets the upper hand and manages to win, but the pair's relationship always feels strained from this point onwards. Mark being Mark though, still does the right thing and works with the character in order to help the planet. Now Cecil's death comes when Mark discovers Robot's plan. After cloning Rex Splode and duplicating his mind into the body, Rudy was slowly driven to believe that he was the best person to lead the planet and he put a plan in place in order to take over. Mark told Cecil of this and though Cecil didn't really believe this completely, he told Robot he was revoking his access to the GDA protocols until he could carry out an investigation. Realising that the jig was up, Robot grabbed Cecil and slit his throat before stomping on his head, killing the character out of nowhere. Now this wasn't quite the last time that we saw him and there was actually a big reboot in Invincible that came years and years down the line. Mark's consciousness was sent backwards in time to his younger body, however he still retained his memories from over the years. Mark asked the past version of his father to stop the invasion of Earth and this led to them going head to head. However, he tricked his dad into going to the Guardians of the Globe headquarters and there he revealed the truth about Nolan. Together they managed to defeat the supervillain, avenging their deaths in the alternate timeline and Cecil arrived to take Nolan in. Thus, the character does live on in somewhat of an alternate dimension, though Mark does sort of reset things in a lot of ways. However, Invincible does live on the multiverse theory, and thus there are possible universes in which different events occurred. Anyway, that's the main top and bottom of Cecil's story and how it happens in the comics. Obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the character as well as which characters you want to see me cover next. Comment below and let me know and as a thank you for interacting with the video, you'll be entered into a prize drawn the 30th of April in which we're giving away 3 copies of Zack Snyder's Justice League in 4K. All you have to do to be in with a chance of winning is drop a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and also leave your thoughts on Cecil in the comments below. The winners of last month's competition are on screen right now, so if that's you, then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch, then make sure you check out our breakdown of the latest episode, which will be linked on screen right now. We've gone over the entire thing from top to bottom, so it's definitely worth checking out if you want to know more. With that out of the way, thank you for sticking through the video. I've been Paul, and I'll see you next time. Take care, peace.